Hello, I'm Lux, and I'm not a pretty boy, but we're about to talk about some. And I'm Ember, and apparently I don't even exist in this universe because there are no girls. And you guessed it, this is our thoughts on Cute High Earth Defense Club Love Love, episodes 8 through 12. This, 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 this season. <laughs> if you haven't finished watching it yet, go watch it and then come back. Because, spoilers, this is your only warning. Yes, spoilers about pretty boys in nice outfits. Kind of. Okay, first off, those twins. They are like creepy fanboys. Extremely creepy. As if episode 7 didn't have us clued in enough. It gets worse. Listening devices? Really? <laughs> and weird fantasies? I was gonna save that one for later, but yeah. Also sticking your idolized hero in a coffin, since we're going there. <laughs> yeah. But okay, let's see, what, was it 8 or 9? Where it was basically a love potion that struck Yamoto? <laughs> it wasn't 8, because that was the New Year's episode. Oh yeah. Really should have watched 7 and 8 together because Christmas and New Year's, they're only a week apart. Mm -hmm. But we just couldn't resist 7 last time. If you listened to the previous recording, you understand why. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's serious. That, that episode was like, that and the Christmas episode are the best episodes in this season. <laughs> yes, the Christmas episode for reasons previously stated. And the Valentine's one, because it's Yamoto, and I really don't do shipping, but basically it was Yamoto shipped with everyone except Wombat. Because Wombat was the only one he didn't say I love you to. Mm-hmm. Oh wait, I didn't notice that. <laughs> Good catch there. Well, with Wombat it was just a cuddle fest. With everyone else, it was something positive that I see about you, I love you, as I have you pinned in a classic confession pose which i think tops the previous season's uh bathhouse episode i okay i all the episodes have bathhouse so when they went to the retreat oh yeah <laughs> and he was like pulling his clothes back on <laughs> yes not just that but also between the three villains and the five heroes the awkwardness oh Speaking of awkwardness, going to the final episode again. It was all about a lover's quarrel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call it a lover's quarrel. What else would you call it? <laughs> uh, we'll get to that also awesome episode a little bit later. Yes, I, I think this season probably wins for the least use of fight scenes. Because we don't even spend much time battling the monsters that aren't being ignored by the battle lovers. That was another thing I liked about these last couple of episodes, where the fact that the battle lovers were like, dude, just go away. We, we don't need this. Or, it's a holiday. We're, we're declaring this a holiday. This is a day off for us. You go. Don't bug us. <laughs> yeah. Which is basically the New Year's Day episode, episode 8, as the monster shows up and they're like, no, it's New Year's. We're taking the day off. Go away. What kind of monster just leaves? If they're not going to fight you, just attack them anyways. He, he is like, I gotta say that he is like the most useless monster out of all of them because of his attitude. Because of his attitude, I could see that. Because I was going to go, what about the chest hair monster? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. But it was, it was mostly because of the fact that he, he, like, I don't know. He was like, I'm like, they picked the wrong guy. They really did. So then they turn around and go, we have lots of good candidates this time. And they turned all of their loyal followers into chocolates. Mm-hmm. And then they started worshipping Yamoto. <laughs> yes, red angel, red angel. <laughs> and everyone's like, what are they even talking about? I think they're talking about Yamoto. Which is funny that he was transformed and they said Yamoto rather than Scarlet. Mm-hmm. Also in season two, they're a little less careful with the whole secret identity thing. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, I love the, we're actually these guys! Oh. <laughs> and just ignored them for a month and a they half. Have. 
it reminds me of that line from Pharaoh's Throne. I was more intimidated by those guys That's from season, season four. four. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this show. Oh. And I do like when they, even when they ramp up the seriousness of the episodes, it still retains its comedy nature. Also, what was going on to another part of the final episode? What was with Yamoto? <laughs> Yeah, explain to me how his past self and his current self were resonating across the time-space continuum just because he was finally remembering that that day at Binionland he woke up and Goro wasn't there. Though very nice for the lead to temporarily turn to the dark side in his desperate attempts to get his brother back mm -hmm. and very nice of the battle lovers to actually stop him instead of just letting him use that incredibly powerful attack that probably would have worked. Uh, and going back to the, I'm just gonna call it the love potion episode. I yeah. love how they uh, cure him. Yes. Uh, Goro just goes, strip, splash. Be yourself, Yamato. Hold on back. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, okay, take him to the bath, throw him in. Goro-san, something's <laughs> wrong with Yamato. <laughs> and that's the first time we've seen Gora in the bath. Because in the, I think it was previous season, he says that he's not worthy of the bath. We never once see him in the bath. Well, that certainly reminds me of the flashback of, so you like chopping wood? Yeah, I like chopping wood. <laughs> Which was interesting because I always thought he chopped the wood because of his time as a battle lover. Not mm -hmm. that he started chopping wood and that the representative chose him for that. Mm -hmm. I also like Gora's agent. Because he's so like, hi, you look good. Want to wanna fight? Oh, you're really good at fighting. You could be a hero. <laughs> Much calmer than Wombat. Mm -hmm. Wombat's like, love everywhere! <laughs> also, the difference between Gora and the battle lovers, not just the costumes, but the attack style. Gora actually has to carry his axe with him, and the axe gets transformed. The battle lovers get the standard magical girl wand. Also, his final attack is still with the axe. There is nothing about love in that. It's chop. Maybe it's actually the difference in technology because Goro was first and Wombat was next. So maybe Wombat has better technology? Entirely possible, but there doesn't seem to have been much improvement in the monsters. I do like that little touch in the flashback, though, of the monster gets cut in half. And the guy's sitting there all happy, kind of in his underwear, and you see the monster suit in half, and you wonder, was this guy actually a mascot for the park that got transformed? Well, he was probably supposed to be in the hero show, and then for some reason he got picked to be the monster, and so the real heroes ran off, real heroes in air quotes for the hero show, and then Gora had to show up. Mm. Also, it was nice to see that the evil twins actually had contact with Gora, that they weren't mm -hmm. just fanboys of the show but the Gora actually saved their lives mm -hmm. and it sounds like they actually had that happen to them before they actually watched the show they didn't watch the show until later when they moved though i love how everyone kept asking like, so, so you were lived in outer space right how did you not see this version <laughs> well we had this old tv was this broadcast on earth or <laughs> yeah i'm really not sure if it was broadcast on earth or not and then also Explain the differences between the broadcast that the brothers saw, which was actual footage, mm -hmm. and what we had playing at the theater in the finale, which was all revamped to make Gora the villain. I love it. Recutting footage, bad dubbing, callback to four kids. <laughs> Who says it was actually a callback to four kids, but maybe it's just a callback to bad dubbing and editing, period. Yes, but four kids is the most guilty out of all of the anime. Well... As Americans concerned, I don't know about Japanese. True, we have a very slanted view. Being in a different continent from other people. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we don't really have any friends who live over there, so... Because that doesn't make sense for it to be on a Japanese broadcast. Unless the people writing it had experience with what happened to their work when it was brought over to... Well, exported to other countries. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of exporting to other countries, could someone else get the license for both seasons and bring it over here for a reasonable price and dub it? Because I have a feeling the dub would be great, even if it was bad. <laughs> because just hearing those lines in English would probably be hilarious. But 
uh, special edition box sets with soundtracks that I don't need and done in like four episode blocks. It's all about money and space. For the same amount of money and the same amount of space, I can get much more of another season, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, because we're both like, oh, cool, it's being released in the U.S. Who are these guys? And then when it actually comes out, sign up! <laughs> oh, it's one of those. It's like having Anaplex get a series. Yeah, because like, dudes, you do realize that if you just release it subtitled, you're targeting the wrong market. The problem is... You have to compete with free. Yeah. If you have to compete with free, you have to give better options than free. The soundtrack and everything was nice for a special edition, but once again, you're competing with free. What's easy to get? Soundtracks. What's not easy to get? Good dubbing. Yes. And just to clarify, as we're discussing competing with free, we did watch the series legitimately. On Crunchyroll. So if you haven't seen it yet, go to Crunchyroll. Also, why are you still listening to us? We told you about spoilers. Go away. Go. Crunchyroll's free. Go. Go watch. Why are you still here? Oh, you already watched it? Okay, welcome back. Yeah. No. Come on. Come on. <laughs> ah, interacting with an audience we don't even have. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it that well. I'm going to have to edit that out. And I leave it in, because I said this line right afterwards. Because <laughs> that hurt me. <laughs> uh, now that we've watched it as a whole, what were your favorite moments from this season? Yeah, basically all of episode 7, episode 9, and most of the finale. Yeah. You kept, after we were watching every episode from 8 onwards, we were like, this show! Wow, this show! <laughs> In my opinion, they did a great job of ramping up the season. Yes, and spoofing the genre while at the same time honoring it and branching off into their own thing. Mm-hmm. Because it's, it's not really a magical boy show. Even though the first season was definitely a magical boy show. This is something different. This is its own thing. Yeah, it's International American Idol. <laughs> that was the twist this time. Yes. I mean, not that we couldn't see a bit of that earlier on with the evil twins always using songs. Mm -hmm. And, oh my god, they got a lot of mileage out of that footage. Mm -hmm. And finally at the finale, it made sense. They are actually international idols. Well, universal idols. Intergalactic idols. idols. And the reason they hate the battle lovers is because CIDE2 got popular and they lost their chance for a time slot to finally have a show so that they could finally broadcast and reach Gora. Mm-hmm. Once again, I like to point out how obsessed they are. Should we go into the details of how obsessed they are other than they put him in a coffin? Well, let's see. They knitted him a Christmas sweater. They, air quotes, crashed the Christmas party. They have the listening devices. They decide that they need to kill Yamoto in order to get to Gora. They put him in a glass coffin, and then they're leaning up against the coffin saying very disturbing things. Like, I wish he would slap me, uh, what was it, reluctantly? Yeah, I wish he would reluctantly slap me. I wish I could tie him up. You want to tie him up? Well, I don't want him to run away. You want him to slap you? Yeah, I think it'd be kind of thrilling. <laughs> I'm like... Okay. <laughs> Guys, they're scary and not in the fun Halloween way. Stranger danger, stranger danger. <laughs> Bad. Go away. No. Stop. Stop right now. <laughs> and for the final battle to be a sing-off. And people voting on who they'd like better. And then them going, when the battle lovers go to sing, like, they're off key and everything. How are they getting so much more likes? I don't think it was that they were getting more likes, it was that they were getting likes at all. And finally we got to see an on-screen translation of the lyrics. Mm-hmm. Because I really miss that in so many modern anime series now. They don't bother to dub the intro songs. You mean I, translate the intro songs? They don't bother to translate the intro songs and put that up on screen. Yeah. It used to be you'd at least get it every other episode, so you get one episode clean text one episode with subtitles. I really liked that because it allowed you to get 
the lyrics and also once you had kind of gotten the lyrics look more closely at the imagery to see what hints there are in the intros and outros because there are mm -hmm. i just like wondered about that because uh what's really interesting is when we were doing sailor moon you were watching it and weren't getting the subtitles but i watched it on crunchyroll and got the subtitles yeah and i was watching directly from viz who was the company providing it you know the rights holder and everything mm -hmm. you would think they would have the best version i wonder if the dvd slash blu-rays have subtitles for the intro and outro songs maybe they save that for the um dvd slash blu-ray releases could be but they've done a lot of tweaks to the and fixes to the animation for the dvd blu-ray release mm -hmm. hmm, that's the thing we want to look up to see if they've done anything with cute high earth defense club love for their releases because we know they did a lot for the first two seasons of sailor moon crystal viz isn't the company that has cute high earth defense club love love no, but I'm talking about the company in Japan who originally animated it. Ah. When they did the DVD releases, did they do any, did they do any fixes for Cute High? Because mm. that seems to be a theme now. The show gets released because it's on such a tight schedule. They don't have a chance to really fix anything if there's any major errors. They just release it that way. And then the DVD slash Blu-rays get a um, reanimated version of certain scenes that they didn't have time to finish animating. Which, again, extra value. Mm -hmm. It also gives the animators more time to tweak the scenes. Yeah, but I'm of two minds about that because that's like how they rush video games out and then put patches out to fix everything just so they can stay on a schedule. Hmm. I really like the way Nintendo does it because they release a game and it's finished, but if there's a bug, then they fix it. And I really like the way Nintendo does DLC too. It's much more bang for your buck compared to other companies, especially since a lot of other companies are like, day one DLC, but this is already on the disc. Why didn't you just, I don't know, sell it with it? <laughs> As in, include it in the price, <laughs> but moving on from video games. <laughs> uh, anything you didn't like about the season? Uh, the repeated use of twins. Episode 4 with having the Italian twins, and I believe there was another set of twins. Hmm. So it, it seemed a little overused to have that many sets of twins. And of course, since we were dealing with different nationalities there had to be a very stereotypical portrayal not that all countries don't do this to some degree mm -hmm. america we have guns and we like guns and we like beef thank you japan oh don't forget that we always have flags we always have to have an american flag on us mm -hmm. or we have strikingly blonde hair in some weird style that obviously makes us american yes except for porco rosso the American in Porco Rosso, watching it in Japanese as an American, I thought they were portraying him as French. Hmm. And uh, they do it to other countries too, and we definitely do it to China, Japan. We do it to segments of nationalities and social groups within our own country. country. It doesn't make it any less annoying. Yeah, we're just saying that that's what we picked up on. And I think they specifically did it in this show to make it funny. Yes, which kind of helps a bit, but I'm not a fan of racial humor, so even in a show as awesome as this. Well, I'm okay with it most of the time because I don't get offended easily. It's really hard to offend me. Someone's going to try in the comments now. You realize that, right? Yeah, and I'll just keep hitting the delete key. It's not that hard. Hit the button, delete, or block, spam. And also the whole thing with how, you know, the Vepper were focused on were idols. Yeah, the battle lovers are heroes. You guys are in two different categories. I also love how they kept correcting them. It's Vepper. Because I think they kept saying Vesper or something like that. Yeah, or Vesta or just Vep. Mm -hmm. Also, that's another thing that was kind of funny to me in this. Speaking of stereotypes and racial stuff, a lot of English. Yes, a lot of English. Thank you, subtitles. Thank you. <laughs> Because that was, that kind of made me giggle a little bit because of, it wasn't the worst English. It wasn't the best English. It was just really good English. <laughs> yeah, it was just good enough that we could probably catch most of the words if we didn't have the subtitles. But thankfully, we had subtitles. Mm -hmm. My favorites, as I said before in the previous one, happy you, lucky you. <laughs> Yes, and how they changed that when they were going to do their ultra killer attack. <laughs> Unlucky you. 
unhappy you. Oh, dang, we're dead. <sighs> also, the very interesting thing of that the two villain team animal mascots were brothers. Like, they're not even the same species. How are they brothers? <laughs> Well, apparently we don't know how alien species work. We just know that apparently most of them look like animals. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the poor Bapu brothers going to the Andromeda system. Not only are they from a planet that's being featured on a show that apparently no one liked, but they also don't look like anyone else. So it falls under the, okay, they're the new kids and they're different. Let's just pick on them incessantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then you want to be idols? But you're just a flying squirrel. I resemble a flying squirrel. But you're just... <laughs> also, that suddenly reminded me of the torture scene in the bathhouse with the flying squirrel. <laughs> what do you want? I don't was like, oh, well, these look interesting. No, no, no! Uh, this show has some weird, sometimes dark undertones and just the weirdest kind of dark. Yes, but now it also makes more sense of why the flying squirrel-like alien was so kind of protective and looking after the brothers during this whole thing. You know, making the food and everything. Because he got to them when they were still children. Mm-hmm. Ah, so, what were your final thoughts on this season as a whole? Amazing. If you are seriously all the way here without watching it, first, shame on you. Second, thank you. Third, go watch it. <laughs> thank you for watching our stuff first before watching an even away, 10 tiers, maybe higher, better quality show than ours. Um, yeah, we have like no budget, no writing staff, no effects staff. Also, if you think this is scripted, I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> Apparently, we ad-lib really well. But thank you for watching. My final thoughts are like, oh my god, this was better than the first season. That's rare. Also, how on earth will they do a third season after this? I still want a flashback to Gora's season. Yeah, I'm just like thinking if they do do a third season, where would they go from here? Oh, and if they do do a third, I kind of want them to stop at three because it feels good. But I wouldn't mind more, because it would probably still be enjoyable, but it may not be as. <laughs> so, like, wow. <laughs> uh, I enjoyed it. The pacing was good. The ramping up in the season was good. I love the fact that it actually knew about itself, so it was making fun of itself and the genre at the same time. It's a wonderful show. If you've already watched it, go watch it again. Because <laughs> we're probably going to. Ah, well, thank you for listening. This has been... Our thoughts on Cute High Earth Defense Club Love Love, where love has no meaning. <laughs> and speaking of love, we would love, love, love it if you would subscribe. And we would love, love, love it if you looked at my art and maybe favorited it, liked it, reblogged it, or retweeted it. You know, you can find all my stuff on Twitter, Tumblr, and DeviantArt. So... Share the love. And if you want to share even more love, why don't you head over to my Patreon? Maybe drop me a couple of bucks and be able to see it all in glorious HD and high resolution. I am currently working on recreating a 3D model of the Cutie Mark Crusaders Clubhouse. If you want to come over and encourage me to work on that project, or if you just want something of your own, you can commission me. Because remember Battle of Versulfur, love, money, somewhat related. And that's a wrap.